good morning. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Um, just say, I hope you can hear what's going on a little bit better than usual. Um, we've installed a new speaker in, in there, so it's a little bit louder everywhere. Um, hopefully not too loud for you. So it means Chris gets to hear my sermons finally. Um, probably less compliments now. Um, it's an exciting morning. We're going to do some science today. So, um, so I, I, I have a white coat to wear. I, I don't think I need goggles, but we'll, 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 I should have risk assessed this, shouldn't I, really? But anyway, so we've, we've got some science for our sermon today. Um, the other thing to say is we're looking forward to the ABCM, that's the general meeting, meeting, and we're also looking to extend our worship and come back to something like pre-COVID. So if you're interested in um, helping out in some way, maybe reading or um, doing some jobs around the church, just let us know or, or let me know and she'll, she'll help you find your place and what you should be doing. There's always something interesting to do, either large or small. So um, I think other announcements are just to say that Liz is leading the worship on Wednesday evening, evening prayer. Um, and uh, is it next week? I can't remember which week it is. There's a Swinton have a concert next week in church as well, which is on the email. Uh, a string quartet, if you're interested in going along to that. I've got two tickets, I bought already. So, we'll be. Yes. <laughs> two. Yes, with a. Yes, that's right. Um, so, we're going to begin with our gathering here through all the changing scenes of life.
sit on the hill for our friends and penitents. We come to God just as we are with our, our weak behind in a struggle. We come to you, Lord, knowing your love and forgiveness and care for us this day. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy.
righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast that you do not see? Why humble ourselves that you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fastings as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose to loosen the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own king, Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, sweet John. Uh, 
today. I hope you can see a little bit. I might just call this in the middle. Um, I'm going to put on a lab coat, you know, just because it's um, a bit messy. I've, I nearly thought about bringing goggles, but I think it's safe enough um, for us for me not to need goggles. And hopefully nothing will go on the electronics. Um, that's all a bit short service and a trip to A and E. Um, so, so we've been we just heard that reading, and it was the, the the words that Jesus spoke were said after he'd been teaching those incredible words of the Beatitudes. Do you remember the Beatitudes? Those that kind of stunning. Um, teaching that turns the world upside down and the, and the image of the new kingdom that Jesus teaches is completely opposite, really, really opposite to what the world teaches how we should live. You might, might remember things such as, um, you know, blessed are those who mourn. Oh, we don't think of people that mourn as being, as being blessed in any way. Blessed are those who are meek, because the meek will inherit God's... Firstly, um, I've got two, a question. What has or what is salt used for? So this, this is audience participation, congregation participation. What things do we use salt for? There's a few obvious ones. <coughs> Enhancing flavour of Se food. Yeah, seasoning, isn't there? Um, anything else that we use? Preserving. Preserving, yes, yeah. especially in all, older times, but also, also now as well. Yes. Melting ice, yeah, that's a great one. Also, <coughs> that's a good one as well. Um, has anyone ever been told, gone to the dentist and then been told to, yeah, yeah it's got antiseptic qualities and healing qualities to it as well. Um, and in Jesus' time, it was also used as fertilizer, would you believe? He used small amounts of it as a soil improver as well. So we're going to do a little experiment here. Um, I've got some coke. And I'm going to pour salt into it. And I'm going to ask you now, what do you think is going to happen? Anyone, any ideas? Yeah, we've had, we've had hand signals. Okay. More interestingly, does anyone know why? How, why that happens? I took it up. It's not as big a reaction as a Mentos, but any, any ideas why that happens? That's it. Okay, here we go. Any ideas? Yeah. Do you know why, why it happens? Why? Oh, you just want to watch it. Yeah. Okay, are you ready? Okay. Whoa! That's quite a good one. Off it goes. So, yeah, there's a, there's a chemical reaction um, with, with, the, with the salt. And I'm going to read it out here because I'm not a scientist. Um, the, the reaction of salt and coke is called nucle nucleation. It's due to the rough surface of a grain of salt. When salt is added to the carbonized soda, the carbon dioxide that I suddenly has more points to react to it with in the water, and it forms carbonic acid. So there you go, that, that's what happens. So well done for that. So what I'm kind of saying is that there's a kind of growth in God's kingdom for our saltiness, for us being, um, and there's a kind of reaction to this in the world when we've got that salt of God in us. So, uh, what's the next one? Oh, yeah, not that one next, it's the egg and glass. So, what happens when I put an egg in this just normal water? Depends how fresh it is. It's, it's probably Yorkshire water, it's got kip access, fairly. <laughs> no, I meant the egg. The, the egg, what, what, what's going to happen to the egg? It might float, it might find out the It should sink. It is what we call George, no, she's not laying at the moment. She isn't helping our <coughs> raise beds. Um, so yeah, that's, so that's that. I'll hold up for you. The egg sinks to the bottom, that's quite normal. What happens if I put salt into this water? Okay. If I can get it out <laughs> without breaking the egg. So does anyone know why it will float? This um, imagery here. The salt will help us float, okay? Our saltiness, our kind of like being connected with God, will help us float. I'm excited about it. Water makes more dense. 
it also makes it a bit more dense. But no. Oh, look at that. Exactly. It's a protection. <laughs> it took me a while to find these crisps. Do you remember these? The salt and shake. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, so I'm going to try and... Don't forget. Uh, we've got two, so who needs some crisps? Who needs some crisps? Go on, have a... Who's okay having a crisp? Would you? Yeah. So would you have some crisps? But don't put the, the little shaker in. Do what it tastes like. Would you like some as well? There we go. And do the same. So taste them without the salt. And then um, see how they are with it. I won't drink that water. Yeah. How do they taste just without... Yeah, you can share the brown if you like. How does it taste without the salt? Last night, maybe we liked it. But here we go. 
and I'm going to ask you, I'm going to pour some water, dyed water, into the plate, onto the plate. And then I'm going to put this glass over the top, okay? What do you think is going to happen to the candle and the liquid? So the candle will definitely go out. We know, we understand that. What do you think is going to happen to the liquid? To the glass. It will go a certain distance up the glass as the oxygen is exhausted. Well, let's see if you're right. Okay, you ready? Okay. Here we go. See, it's slowly going out. Can you see what's happening to the liquid? It's going up the, up the glass. Absolutely right. Fantastic. Um, can you all see that? That's, that's moved up the glass. So what's happened is the, this, the glass has made a seal with, with the liquid, which has stopped oxygen moving in and out of the space where the candle is. And the candle has burnt up the oxygen, taking up some of the gas inside of the glass. And the air pressure, the pressure from outside, and the vacuum that's created, has forced the liquid up into the glass. Um, God's light, um, well if we're, if we're light, light we're, we're, sh we're shining in, in a dark world, if we lose the oxygen, if you like, if the oxygen, the Holy Spirit, if you like, or the oxygen of our lives is taken away from us, is blocked out, which it can be very easily by the troubles and difficulties of the world and our distractions, then that, that candle dims, doesn't it, and can, go, and can go out. But Jesus is saying, no, it will, you will be, you'll be fine, stay close to me, and your light will shine. And I just love the way that the, the liquid kind of rises up in that little experiment there. So, Jesus makes it clear that God has begun a new work in us. He's using these symbols, if you like, these ideas to remind us of that teaching. He gave us the Beatitudes will be hard, but we will shine as light and we will be salt in, into our world if we stay close to God and that He lives in us. And it's not about trying harder. When you read the Beatitudes, the Beatitudes is about God's mercy and God's goodness. It's not about how great we are or how able we are, it's about doing what we need to do where we are now and that's not based on ability or, or, or anything else other than being present where we are as that salt and light and that can be in tiny tiny ways it can be in the smallest ways of just bringing somebody of encouraging somebody of care, caring for somebody who's ill all those other things in which we can be light in the world so i'm going to finish by asking you today in what way are you salt and light in the world. In what way could you be sort of light in the world? I'm going to sit down, get out of the way and be quiet and have a moment for us just to think about that and, and I'll finish with a short prayer. But I hope you've enjoyed the experiments. I've enjoyed the experiments. Thank you.
love to us, that you have made us salty and full of light, that it is your will to change the world around us and that we are vessels of that change. Help us be salty, help us be a light on a lampstand, on a hill, city on a hill. That we don't boast in our good works, but that our good works flow from your love for us. Help us serve you wherever we are, whatever circumstances we find ourselves in. Keep us salty and full of light. We pray. Amen. <laughs> Let's stand and say these words together. We get into the mystery of God. We pray to you, our Lord and God, that your bright light may shine in all the dark areas of our world and in every Christian person. Encourage and enable all charities working to relieve and help people throughout the world. May Christians everywhere be instrumental in restoring flavour where life has become tasteless. We pray for peace in Ukraine and throughout our world. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. In these challenging times, it is easy to feel despondent and discouraged. We ask, Lord, that we rediscover the savour in our lives and the joy that is there. Encourage us to spread this joy. May our faith, whatever our difficulties, grow stronger. Lord, in your mercy. In your there is cruelty, tyranny, and aggression in our world. <coughs> but your spirit, Lord, is at work. And we pray for that new, clean world to which you call us. For their lungs are ruled with wisdom, honesty and mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all people who are finding life difficult. The hungry. The sick. The bereaved the depressed and anxious. We ask, Lord, that your spirit will bring you hope into time of despair, feeling, comforting, healing, giving strength and peace. We ask for new reasons to smile, a new cause for laughter. We remember silently all those we know who need your help, Lord. We pray for all who are sick in our parishes. Then she will. Go. We 
Lisa. Kathleen and Claude Jaden. And Dorothy Steele. We also pray for those who are dying and those who have died. For Maurice Clayton. Maurice Edwards. Colette Lennon. Margaret Bastard. And for those we remember from either play, may they know the bright light of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. With new eyes we can look at our souls, at our church, and see ourselves clinging to the past. Afraid of where we will find God in this fast changing age, fearfully hiding behind our traditions and worship, nervous of that new life that is the life of faith in Christ, lived in union with one another. But God's Spirit is at work, constantly surprising us with the beauty of old truths revealed in new ways. We pray that others may hear your word as disturbing, fresh and new, that together we may walk in hope towards tomorrow. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord of love, Thank you for hearing and responding to our prayers, spoken and unspoken. May all those for whom we have prayed know your spirit within them and your strength surrounding them. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share in his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also share one another sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you at home, those who are watching.
Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall not be here. The body of Christ broke for you, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you, keep you in eternal life. <coughs>
merciful Father, who gave Jesus Christ to be for us the bread of life, and that those who came come to him should never hunger, draw us to the Lord in faith and love, that we may eat and drink with him at his table in the kingdom, where he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. So please stand for our final hymn, Shine Jesus Shine. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.